All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is uh, Bracon, and I'm being joined here today by uh, House Test. Hello, everyone. And we'll be playing through uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, but we'll be playing it on extreme difficulty and getting all the dog tags, which is basically this game's version of uh, 100%. Yeah. And um, just as a quick reminder, we are changing this to be uh, previous. That will be very important for later. And we're going to have no radar on, and we're going to attempt to go for the big boss rank, which basically means perfect stats, only three alerts, which are the three required for the game, and no ration to use. Although I may have to use one at the very end due to safety precautions. Yep. All right. And um, also very important, we're going to be uh, playing it on um, um, New Game Plus. You skip a cutscene, and also to have some other things altered later that we'll get to. And playing Tanker 2 Plant, because that's the entire game, of course. And then going to Extreme, the radar, and knocking over if discovered. And are you ready to start this? I'm ready. All right. In three, two, one, go. <laughs> All right, everyone. So we're playing Medical Solid 2, as we explained, the hit sequel that came out in 2001. And we're specifically playing on the Sons of Liberty version, the US release. The game was very first released in the US and then later came to the JP region and the PAL region. And uh, because this is the very first release, there are a few interesting quirks about this version. A few things cannot be skipped, like cutscenes in certain uh, sections. And also, in regards to the odd tags requirement, we're also going to have a few guards that are, for example, just regular dudes instead of tough guys. And um, also, we have way less dog tags that we need to collect. We have 26 in total here for the tanker chapter and 54 later in the plant. And we're going to start our journey here going to the right side and immediately start collecting the first three dog tags here. We're going to time ourselves quickly here to get this guard's attention and then he will notice us. Now, this is a so-called day shot as we got to quickly pause in here. There you go, holding it up. And we're also going to make great use of the M9 here in order to tranquilize these guards before they even have a chance in order to call in enemy alerts. As we've said, we're going to try for perfect stats. They are free mandatory alerts. Every other alert, of course, we want to try to avoid. For reference safety, we're going to go a little bit slower here over the corner. Normally, you could also just walk and try to meet the guard at the stairs. I just want to make it safe here. So we can have a quick look. There we go. Looking away. And now we can get this guard's dog tag as well. Freeze. And then we can enter the door. There we go. All right, first room done. That one is one you know, is like, okay, that's done. Now we can start. And um, yep. um, like, um, for like anyone curious, um, the actual doctor names are uh, people that actually worked on the game, including two that many people probably know very well, which we'll see one here at the tanker and one at the end of the game. Indeed. We're going to make sure as we travel throughout with that we're going to collect all of the dog tags that we can so far. As I said, there are specific guys are called tough guys, which we need to actually threaten further than just holding a gun into the face. But we cannot get their dog tags yet because we have to meet first boss upstairs, which is called Olgar. From here we get another weapon and then we can do this. That was not an alert, by the way. That's not how it counts. You have to see the actual um, like, uh, status. Yep. The top right of the screen, but otherwise it's just fine. Don't kill me. There we go. In the meantime, while we hold them up and they're shaking off his dog tag, we're going to get more ammo. Oh. Okay, don't even need to bump them. Okay, that's cool. No, it's totally fine. There's still enough time before they start lowering their hands. And we just heard him barely starting his line to call in the alert. This camera, thankfully, on European Extreme just turns around and we just need to walk past it. There's nothing that we need to do. And for many instances and purposes, this is one of the hardest rooms in the game, just at the beginning. We're going to hold up this guard, punch and throw it over the shoulder. We're going to enter the pantry here. This has another guard spawn in. And now we've got to be quick on the foot here. We're going to hold this guard up. Freeze. Nicely done here, get his dog tag. There's another one coming in that we also need to catch off guard here. Go. Perfect. Now we gotta wait for the camera to turn away. And now it's time to go up the stairs. <laughs> nicely done, nicely done. <laughs> GG's. That is one of probably the three or four hardest rooms in the entire game, so getting that first try is very, very nice. Yep. So many things that can go wrong. As I said, just having one alert is basically a death sentence. You can just restart the room. All right, and here we go to the first boss fight. Olga, technically relatively easy, but we're playing on extreme difficulty, so we only have uh, a few chances to get shot. Let's hope she goes left, because that enables us to have a little loop on her. Oh. But sadly, she goes right this time, so we gotta wait out here. It's a little bit slower, because she will do a cutscene here, which we could loop if she was going to the left side. But it's all fine, we're gonna give her two headshots at this point. Wait for the cutscene to come in. And then two extra ones later. I 
Worth a few RNG seconds, but not that big. I think it's about 8 to 10 seconds on. Yep. Make sure we go to left. And unfortunately, she goes back here because she also could have gone to the box in front of us. But we have a time waste, but again, not a big of a deal. Speaking of time waste, it's time to quit more dog tags. We're here in the navigation of death. <laughs> it's it's okay. like that. <laughs> yes, Olga has also a dog tag that we connect. It's her own name, but it's one of the very few ones that actually have basically the in game character as a name here. Skip the codec here. And equip a gun and then just quickly pick her up. And this pickup then will have her drop the dog tag. What's well, not done yet here on this navigation deck, we're going to quickly go over to the right side. We're not going to enter here in this door. And I personally think this is one of the coolest guards because we're going to get his dog tag basically without actually collecting it. Let's see it here. We're going to hold him up, threaten him here. And then we're going to start opening the door. And we're going to take so many steps back, actually. There we go. That we collect the dog tag while we leave the room. Very efficient. Yep. Don't forget the Soka ammo here. And now it's time for another tough guy. The first tough guy actually that we're going to collect, and also a very well-known name, as we're going to see in just a few seconds. Go. Freeze. Drop this guy. Shoot over said. This is how we get from tough guys their dog tags. And hey, it's Roger Shinkawa, one of the lead designers and basically the artist that made the look of Metal Gear and Metal Gear Solid. Moving on here, we got Dex C. Um, the camera that we just bypassed now uh, has also additionally a guard here, so we're gonna time ourselves to walk past the camera and then at the end of the walk, get this guy's dog tank. Relatively safe and clean. Let's see, you don't wanna mess up the timings here. Now, Deck B is gonna be one of the more trickier guards again, because he can very quickly turn around. We're gonna once again use the so called day strat, where we're just gonna shoot his exclamation mark. He'll be like confused, like, hey, what's happening? Hmm? There you go. And then we're going to just quickly wake him up again, get his dog tag. Like, All right. You served your purpose. Thanks. Now we got to leave. <laughs> so for the next dog tag here, there's actually a uh, small audio cue for the music, and I will be uh, shooting uh, the, the like window seal at a very particular time in order to uh, stop a guard so I can hold the little up at the same time here. Right about there. And then if I move well enough and wait just Freeze. enough, there yep, we get both of them. Oh, and funny enough, like guards, they don't bounce into each other. Only we do. Make sure I get both of them. Don't want to trank one while he's yep. touching the dog tag. So and there right there. And unfortunately, I cannot jump down here because US Soul is a very great version of the game where they yep. took out a lot of stuff or or didn't include it until later releases. So yeah, that's why we lovingly also call it the beta version because later on, many many things got changed a little bit, and I would also say fixed. Freeze. So now we're going to go into the engine room, and there's so many dog tags, uh, I think seven in total. And we've got to be very careful here, because we got to get um, at least two of them on the very first try we enter this room. The specific situation is when you only have one chance to get a guard's dog tag, and if you don't, then, well, basically the run's over. What's going on? Yeah, I need to... Now we're going to be a little working around here, it's totally fine. Okay, and both try and wake these guys up real, real quick. Yeah, that happens sometimes. As I said, we want to be clean here, so... Just knocking them out and then being safe here, that's fine. We can uh, basically just punch over the heads, trying to get them to wake up. Or just drop them down. This is yeah. fortunately not how I finish this room going, but I was a bit slow on the first guard, causing me to Sometimes have to do this. Yep. Shoot. Okay. Yeah, we're seeing that he's only having two Zs now. So he's slowly starting to wake up, and then can sometimes shoot them in the leg like this to wake up even more. Almost awake now. Yep. One more shot. Oh. Oh, that guy's in here. I was gonna say, well, don't want him to. Hurt. Okay, and this guy's gonna wake up here in a second. Uh, come on. Maybe one more drop would do it. Yeah, and the time is running on the second guard as well, so we don't need that much longer for him to. Oh, thanks for the ammo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun Very side nice effects. Ammo. You sometimes also get ammo from these. I want to shoot him another time because he will actually die from it, so I need to. Oh. Yep. Now we're just gonna wait it out for a little bit. That's fine. Those are the there we, go. Hey, there we go. All right. Time to getting to hold up. Oh, and he's a bit lower because I actually shot him in the leg. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. There we go. Now and unfortunately, his, his uh, friend will meet the same fate as I will shoot him twice in the leg. Ow, ow. I see it goes down to one now and yeah. shouldn't be that much longer. And again, this is not ideal situation that you'd want to be in. Typically, you would just not bump into the guy so the guy downstairs did not hear me, but it's going to have to hopefully work on the fly. Oh, no, advantage. Yeah, I don't nice. want that. <laughs> 
And once again, a reminder also, we are not allowed to kill any of these guards. We have to play with zero kills throughout yep. the run if you want to have that big boss rank at there the end of the game. There we go. All right. Freeze. Oh, also <laughs> kind of <laughs> crouched down a little bit. Yep. There we go. All right, All right. Well, well, let's thing. move on. Yeah, the interesting thing is, uh, I don't exactly have a great idea on where this next guy's at, so we're going to just a little peek. Be around the corner. Oh, okay. Yep. Not having the radar in this instance here is a little bit tricky then. Let's have a quick look. Oh, We're gonna is, oh. There you go. We have this one far away. I see where he's at. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh. Now we gotta take care of him quickly before the alert comes in. Oh, no. Well. Is this a kill? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm afraid this is a kill. Okay, so unfortunately we cannot get that dog tag as he is. Unfortunately, he passed away, but um, rest in peace. That's we're gonna let's, just let's try to finish on. out this room and move on because we don't want to be holding this up for too much longer here. So, yeah. wait for these guards to pass by. I do not want them to actually run into me. He's actually gonna be going to the guy that he knocked out. Make sure not above me. Okay. Right. There's this guy here. He is not, which means he's further down in the cycle. Ah, there we go. Yeah, there he is, looking away. That's good for us. Okay. Really? I saw him pretty clearly down the stairs. <laughs> they couldn't even find him. Yep. There we go. We're getting to the end now of the engine room here. There's three sensors that we need to shoot out. But for safety here, we're going to be sure to just get a hold up on this guard as he's fixing the door. Oh, oh okay. I guess because of the caution. It, oh, no. Uh, that's not near what you turn to. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get out of the room as well. Ah, oh. uh, the things that can happen in this game. It's funny at times. Okay, so I'm actually going to need to reset this room here, so I actually need to uh, unfortunately blow up the ship real quick so I can actually reset the room. That guard will also be missed because he is a one-time only, and, yes. you know, unfortunately because this caution happened, but um, we are going to... I'm going to quickly yeah, go. blow up the ship. Okay. And now we are going to backtrack out to actually get the one uh, guard left in the tanker that should have been the last guy, but unfortunately just due to some mishaps in the... In the um, in the engine room, we just had some bad things happen, so now we're gonna just backtrack a little bit and get a guy that'll be right up at above us. Yes. We've got Smelly Guard. It's not mean, it's just the fact that he has a rotten ration within, and um, we're gonna Freeze. just quickly get Stock Tag here. And you've seen uh, this little spark here, that is actually an indicator. If you look in first person at guards, when they have a little sparker on their chest, that is a sign that they have a dog tag. So if you're playing this casually and you don't know do they have a dog tag or not, just check out in first person if they have a little uh, like spark there, then you know, ah, there you go. All right, so the only thing we need to do now is just to take out these three sensors very carefully, make sure we do not blow the ship. Okay, good. Last time was, was uh, very intentional, this time would not be intentional. No, yep. There we go. There okay. we go. All right. Now we have two more to collect uh, for, for um, 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 the waivers, and there has to be more than two. There has to be ten more at this yes, point. Yes, yes. This is the last three that we're going to get now. On our way, we're going to meet a few guards in deck two, and then that's basically after that just a regular run. And despite having lost the big boss rank, sadly, already, uh, we're still going to continue with the same strats. Just to keep it in the spirit. Yeah, keep it in the spirit, of course, yes. Now you're going to shoot them once. You can shoot them up to three times. And on the third time, they will die. So two times, actually, we can delay them a little bit before they call in the alert. The upcoming guard is a music guard who will be a little bit distracted, but as soon as he spots us, he will be immediately there. So we got to still wait him out here. <laughs> and the third guard is a snoozing guard that sometimes wakes up, so we're going to be extra careful here. There you go. Yep, Getting like this. All right, and that's the last one for the tanker. Now we just have to complete the rest of the tanker just as normally would yep. on 80%. Another good thing is that uh, for like later versions, and like um, you know, there's like eight more, but also you need to have full health or else you can't make the long yes. stretch across uh, during like hanging mode. So I have to take this fight a little bit riskier, although I've already taken damage. So Let's not the end of the world, though, because I can still take three more hits before I'm actually in the yep. death zone. Okay. We're gonna quickly shoot this guy here so he's a little bit distracted. There you go. And then we're just gonna take the M9 out and try to train all of these. Especially when new guards are coming in and they're just turning around to shoot you. Their first bullets actually don't hit you at all. It's a little bit of a distraction, so we can actually have some time here to just pre aim. Unless they fall asleep, they also despawn. There you go. Another new one. 
It's one from the back. All right. That's the last one. Well, PG. last three now. <laughs> yeah, we're the last three. We're going to take out the first one non-lethal, and then we're going to move back to take out the last two lethal. Uh, these actually then don't count, because we're going to leave the level quickly enough before they despawn and then count for the statistic. One, two, and there we go. Okay, Fade to black, make sure that they do not count as uh, kills, so it's good to yep. go. Here we go. Now it's time for the holds, and holds, you may remember there's like a double ladder thing. Um, thankfully on all versions of the game you can do a very cool trick that's called the ladder glitch. Um, basic principle is that's why we had the camera on before. We're gonna go on the ladder, but at the same time also get the camera out. And this double layer of animations actually causes the game to be a little bit broken. And with the right inputs, then we're gonna quickly move over to the left. And then wood fall, but in this instance fall damage doesn't count, and boom, we didn't need to go down the ladder at all. And welcome also to the PS2 experience in these holds. We're gonna be very slow. <laughs> Talk about the timer as well, because it actually slows down too. <laughs> yes. And this room in uh, particular, because there's a lot of guards in here as well, and I'll be going right next to them, so you'll see the there will just tank yep. single digits. This is one of the biggest rooms, because of all the CPUs that have an AI. And the PS2 is really struggling. <laughs> there we go, on to holds three. Now in Hold 3, we're going to take four pictures, and if you're playing this on a 60 by 9 version, we know we can take it from two positions. We're playing, though, on the PlayStation 2 version, which is a 4x3 resolution, so we're going to take the left and the middle one in two positions. In all, we've got to do a left side, a front side, and a right side picture, and also we have to take a proof that this is made from the Marines, so we're going to take a picture of the Marine logo on this Metal Gear Ray. Perfectly, though, the game works in mysterious ways, and the hitbox for that is right there. Which doesn't really look like the Marine logo, but in terms of the game, it works. And here we go, the fourth and final picture, and now we're done with the tanker, and we can move on. All right, yeah, and as far as you know, the tanker section, this is pretty much done, so if you guys have any uh, donations to read out, you can read out maybe like five or six, <laughs> because we have we quite, have to quite a few get, minutes. Yeah, until we get actual stuff going. Okay, absolutely. We have just received a $100 donation um, that went towards the Super Metroid Samus cosplay. On top of that, we have received a $5 donation from Vermilion saying, good luck with the run, and I hope the fights are in your favor. We need our lad back. <laughs> Thanks, Verm. And another $5 donation from an anonymous donor saying, imagine just going about your patrol. A guy asks for your dog tag and then just runs away as soon as he gets it. I'd be too embarrassed to tell my CO. And he put that donation towards our Sonic Triple Trouble run for the two players, one controller. And let me just quickly get an update on that because we are getting closer and closer. Yes, 290 euros left to go until we meet that. So if you want to see some weird shenanigans with two players, one controllers tonight, make sure to get your donations in. Let's make it happen. All right, we're back. Now in charge of the plant chapter, this is basically the main portion of Metal Solid 2. And we're now playing as a new character called Raiden. Well, for now he's Snake, but he will be changed later yeah. to Raiden. <laughs> In about five seconds he'll be changing his name. He's like, okay, maybe I should be calling myself Snake, you know, that's a yeah, bit... Yeah, that's a bit weird. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Yeah, technically uh, Snake died in the tanker chapter, but we don't know that yet if it's really true, so I don't know, let's see. And uh, on lower difficulties, like very easy and easy, you can already get a gun down here. But um, starting from normal onwards, you cannot, and you definitely need to have a gun in order to hold up guards. You cannot just choke them from behind. <laughs> so uh, in terms of getting dog tags, down here um, on normal onwards, there's no dog tags. <coughs> All right, and um, so, you know, we're going to the retinal scanner, and this is just a way to actually input our actual name, which does have some implications for the final cutscene, but unfortunately there were some incentives that I had gone through, so we're just going to leave it as A. So we are A for the brain of A, A. Why are we not the? We're just a yeah, exactly. dog tag runner. <laughs> <laughs> and as these guards are going to slowly wake up, and as you will see, the actual very cutscene. Uh, one of the weird things for um, um, this version is that we actually have to be seen because we cannot skip this next cutscene for the elevator. So you're going to see me do a very particular strat, which is very odd, and it's like, why would you do that? But basically, if, like, like I am in the like scene status where I'm not kind of in. In like alert, but I'm not, you know, hmm. fully stealth. Then I can actually skip that cutscene here. So you can see me Judas host this guard, and then walk over and then track another guard to where he will try to call in the alert, but I will uh, cut him short. Yep. Put this one, then he sees us, and he's like, "What the hell?" 
We're just gonna carpool through him like this. That's enough time for us to get away. As soon as we're on this elevator, we're good to go. No, we didn't get shot. Very nice. nice. Very nice, very nice. Sometimes you do get shot, and sadly, while we're loading away, this still counts as damage for the next room then. But didn't happen. So unfortunately, we don't really have too much to do in to like talk to Stillman because you like can actually um, play the game just through the plane chapter if you want to. So there's a lot of rehashing for um for um tutorials, even if you're doing tanker through plant as well, just for you know the sake of um, continuity. So gonna be a lot of dead time for the next I'd say maybe two minutes or so. Two minutes, yeah, roughly. Yep, and unfortunately, like I said, nothing much to do. Just going to be stretching on through. Yep, not going to have to get any guards, but we will soon be getting a, a gun, which we can then get dog tags for. Yay. Thankfully. <laughs> Back on regular schedule here. But <clears throat> going to teach us about hanging mode, which we're going to completely ignore by just rolling right into them. Yep. Not even using it, because that's a bit slow. So maybe you're already interested in learning this game, so I want to quickly use the time to shout out the Metal Gear Speedrunners. Um, we have a great wiki page, and also have many... People in our Discord server, for example, that will happily tell you how to play this game and teach you, of course. If it's not for the odd dog tags, we get it. It's a little bit outside of the normal sphere, but at least if you want to do the regular run, come join us. It's a great fun. All right, so starting from Shrub B Transformer Room, we're going to get our first major cutscene where uh, we actually meet Snake Pliskin. Ah! Very weird name. Ilkwai Pliskin. Ah. I feel like I've kind of heard that Looks before. Looks familiar. You know? And you begin even get. We'll cut scene here with him in it. What's up? Take a look. Mm. Oh. That voice is also kind of familiar too, didn't, right? Yeah. Could be totally Snake, right? Familiar. He died two years ago. Could be Snake. No. Ah. no, no, no way. Believe it or not, in the beginning when I played this for the first time, I wasn't really sure. Like, <laughs> I mean, he looks like Snake, but it could be Hideo Kojima playing tricks on me, and it's yet another twin. You never know. You never know. I know. And I kind of was right later down the road, <laughs> if we want to figure out it that way. <laughs> Alright, we're just on the way now to meet the bomb disposal expert, Stillman. We just see notes that the uh, terrorist unit here actually is taking care of the president. That's why on the right the bridge is destroyed. And the very famous cuts in that I'm always said that we're going to skip it during the speed run where we have the very famous line, <laughs> which I love so much. And finally, we have our final bit of um, cutscenes here. And since we are on um, um, New Game Plus, we can actually uh, skip the actual cutscene. For uh, uh, Stillman, because otherwise, if you're playing on just regular new game, you have to sit all the way through it, which yeah. you know loses a fair bit of time. So you know, thankfully, we are playing on new game plus, where you can just skip through it. Yep. He's just going to explain how we freeze bombs, uh, because disposing bombs, of course, is nothing for a noob like us. But uh, as we freeze them, of course, it takes long enough for them to be able again, so it's more than enough time. Not much to think about. <laughs> And as soon as we're done with this, then, at least also in my mind, whenever I, I do a run, um, that's when really plan starts. Because now we're actually going into full action. We actually have a few things that we can decide on. Uh, we have bombs on each of these struts in this shell one, which is around the circle. And so we can either go clockwise or counterclockwise. We're going to do today counterclockwise. And on our way, also grab plenty of these dog dogs. And start off the very first one is a tough guy. Yep. There we go, we're gonna give him a little slap that we'll put him to sleep for a little bit. And finally, we have this bomb that we see here on the radar. We're actually not gonna do it right now. We're just gonna do it later when we come back. All right, there we go. The first two out of 54. <laughs> yeah, so there's 54 here for the plant chapter. It's quite a big chunk, and most of it's actually gonna be during the bomb disposal, right? So, yeah, there's gonna be a lot just to do in the short amount of time here, and of course, we'll kind of be spread out, but like, the most congested amount would definitely be right here in the bomb disposal. Exactly. Strappy, we're going to see there's a hallway to the left, which is full of cameras, and that leads to the guards that we need to visit now, all the way in this room here. First, we're going to take another call. Now it's time to go down there and take care of the guards and their dog tags. Freeze. What of this guy here? <laughs> And here's a few uh, instances where you can see actually um, Racken is not unequipping his gun, but he's also not shooting after he was holding somebody up. That's because we're playing on PS2 and pressure sensitive buttons. That allows us to uh, put away the gun without unequipping it. Because if we were to do that, they would immediately call in a load on us. So we can just put the gun down like that, and we're good to go. Two more for the count. Enemy on board! <laughs> Enemy <Bye>. on board! <laughs> As we say, as long as we have enough time before the full alert really comes in, during a loadout, we're still fine. 
This is the AB connection bridge where we're going to have a little bit more to do. We're going to hold up this guard from behind. Thankfully, these guards on this difficulty are not tough guys. So we can just get close up to them, give them a little slap, and then they would just take a little nap. Understandable. I'm going to spray this guard here to have them be like, oh, what the hell's going on? I always say the cooling spray actually is smelly gas or stinky. <laughs> it's always going like, ooh. In our instance, it works for us because it distracts the guards for long enough that we can actually sneak up to them, give them a little slap, and then be like, hey, we're here. Give me your dog tag. All right, and right here, we're going to wait for yet another music cue because there's another tough guy, but there's actually one more guard in the room behind us, so we actually have to wait just a little bit. So let's go to music, just kind of jam to it a little bit. Are you going to shoot me? Whoa. All right, right about there. there. Yep. The guard that's down below is further in the cycle, further away from the door. So he doesn't hear that shot, and that's, again, key, because if he would hear that shot calling in the alert, the other one would also immediately know, because, I don't know, I guess... They're Telepathic, I guess. Telepathic <laughs> connected. Telepathic guards. Nah, no, yeah, exactly. The nano machine is enhancing their yep, yep. telepathy. Yeah, and you see here, the actually long range for the holdup is actually quite big, although sometimes they don't want to say freeze, and it makes things yeah. kind of awkward, but as you see right there, like, that one, you have such a long window to actually hold them up. Yeah. And so on an extreme, uh, or even on hard difficulty, there's way more bombs in here. So normally, on the lower difficulties, we don't need to go up here at all. But, um, yep, got to take care of two bombs here in Strade. So we're going to come back down again later and um, get another guard's dog tags on the way. Freeze. Huh? Yep. This one's thankfully not a tough guy, so we're just giving it a little slap. There you go, and then we can go and defuse or freeze the next bomb. Yep. Funny thing about this one is actually um, the game normally wants us to go all the way around these pipes, but we have actually a very long range with the coolant spray, and for us it works out actually quite nice. Whoop, don't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> actually, the bomb, yes, that'd be very bad. Yep, and we game. can freeze the bomb basically from behind. There's also a little bit of movement technique as we can see here. Whenever we're like falling on the floor, we're going to quickly equip the coolant spray, start standing up, and then unequip it again, go into the pistol. And that is like a little animation um, skip. So instead of needing to wait for the entire time to stand up, we just immediately stand up. All right, I'm going to move on to the FA connecting bridge. Going to throw the chaps and throws a cypher to take care of, and another tough guy. But uh, pretty much for most of the rest of Bomb Social is going to be quite hectic, as most of the rooms are going to be difficult on the same level as, you know, uh, Deck D from the tanker. Yep. Oh, oh didn't count. Oh. Good thing that the chaff is effective for a little bit longer, and yeah, you see one of those things where um, <laughs> guards and how they interact with you. As I say, they actually bump into each other with us here. A little bit tricky. Kind of make sure that... I got away. Yeah, should be good now. There we go. As I said, no alerts are allowed, not just for okay. the big boss rank, but also in the purpose of uh, being able to collect these dark tags. We want to play as clean as possible. All right. This first guard, actually, we've got to ignore for now. We've got to quickly go over to the right and get the M9. Uh, in regular runs, we used to not get the M9 at all, but here, we found out actually that for many ways purposes, it's very useful for us to get the M9 now. And for the first instance that we're going to see here, we have two guards at the bottom that will come up now, and we're going to get this guard's dog tag quickly here. And then we're going to stand on our toes to shoot these next two dogs and their exclamation marks. Leading to them both being dazed and standing into each other, as said, they are not bumping into each other. And now we're going to hold up two guards at once and literally just in phasing into each other. No sign of the missing man. Tell me that's not satisfying. I will call you a liar. <laughs> and there we go. Of course, we're going to take off the bomb here. On the extreme difficulty, it's on the left side here. On every other difficulty, it will be fully on the wall, requiring us to actually jump from the top. And we're also going to get this box too here. Because we want to at least use this box delivery system once when we are in strut. So with the boxes, there's different kinds, different numbers, and they can take you all around the shell one to different positions. So box two later will bring us to strut B. All right. So we're going to get ward now. There's claymores here. Just like another thing that calls back to Metal Gear one. Because effectively, from the story standpoint, Medical Solid 2 is basically Shadow Moses recreated. We're going to be extra cautious here and wait in the box for the Seth to move away, so we absolutely do not get an alert here. And now we're going to continue to strut E past the room, get even more dog tags. Yeah, and this one is also a bit of a doozy, almost more so than Strut F. Yep. We want to be noticed here, so the guard walks all the way around. Then we're going to wait here and crouch. We want to hold him up from the crouch position, then quickly stand up. Shoot over him to get his dog tag and shoot out this camera. There we go. 
Oh, there's even more guards down here now. We're going to wait for him to go down to the left. We're going to only hold up the first guard because we want the left one to actually look left. There you go. Take this one out. And now we're going to use the cooldown spray to advantage because there's a bomb actually continuously running around on this conveyor belt here. And it just happens so that we are at a time like this. So we can defuse it like here. And then afterwards continue to get even more dark tags. Yeah, and actually thankfully, uh, you know, bank, um, like, like, like RNG bounces made it to where that uh, first dog tag actually went directly to me, so Very nice, yeah. I didn't have to backtrack and actually go grab it, because sometimes the actual bounces can screw you up, but for there, it actually helped me quite a bit. Yep. There we go. We're going to make sure that this guard is absolutely oh. knocked out. Oh, didn't get the dog tag. There we go. As we talked about, <laughs> the dog tags can pop out anywhere yeah. in the direction. Yeah. It's a bit difficult to try and get it consistent sometimes, but sometimes it'll be a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. But yeah. Now we're getting ready here. There's three more guards upstairs and also another bomb. We're going to get through another cutscene here where we see Mr. X, a ninja. Yes. Who that is. <laughs> and now we're going to go up here to the Strati heliport. Yeah, there's a nice hair there. I wonder who parked it there. A little a, a, um, precursor to what we'll be fighting later on, unfortunately, because that's one of the tougher bosses in the game. But bomb right underneath it for now. Too bad we can't just use it to blow it up and, you know, make sure we don't have to fight that ever again. But what can you do? Yep. And Brecken quite well uses here, actually, not just to hold up the guard with the M9, but immediately shoots them as well to make sure that they get knocked out as they drop their dog tag. Now we're going to quickly use the extreme level guards to their advantage. Actually, the guard that would be in the bottom left is a snoozer. But if you shoot once, he will wake up and say, oh, what the hell is that? And then you're gonna, it's going to come towards us. We're going to shoot out his exclamation mark like this. And there you go. We're going to safe walking all the way around. Just let them come to us. It's way easier. I find a uh, shortage of, um, of like day strats for this game. Like It seems like, oh, well, I'll make it from faster. How can I make it? Days. That's how it is. Nice. <laughs> so always go back to that. <laughs> and a uh, force codec call here just from Rose checking in on us, telling us yep. story stuff that, you know, we're speedrunning, so we don't care about that right ah. now, right? Yeah, exactly. We prefer to who cares? <laughs> <laughs> and now moving on to pretty much the final bomb disposal. There's technically one more guard after this next, well, sorry, two rooms from now because I saw the bridge, one guard there, and then the strut D has a million there. <laughs> <laughs> and that one's going to be the one that's going to be yep. the most stressful because that one has the most room for failure, but. Hopefully I, I, I get a first try here. Let's see. Freeze. This one, of course, is easy. Yep, just so pull up like this. Right through and we don't even need to use an M9 shot, and we just roll for him and then just leave before he ever gets up fast enough. Now this one is interesting, Strut D, again, one of the more hectic rooms. We're going to both use the guards to advantage here. We're going to quickly take out this one. He's falling over. As we move on to the left, on the left guard, there will be guard noticing us, and he will start to... Yep, I think he's coming. Yep. There we go. He will investigate and instead of continuously following us, he will see, oh, there's my body of sleep. So they're going to quickly uh, go over him waking up. That gives us enough time to get this third guard's dog tag. And now here's the interesting thing. We actually let him wake up the other guard, which is way faster than we could ever do. And we're going to hold up this first guard. As we hold him up, we're going to hold up the second guard and get all the dog tags. Okay. Nicely done, nicely done. Very tight time because there's a guard downstairs that if you're a little too slow, he'll actually hear you. I was so fast, oh, he actually noticed me, so I have to did, use the cool and spray so that he does not yeah, actually no, see me. And let me just hold him up now. So that's yeah, very good. So nice like that, he actually saw me. That means that I had good movement, so that's very good. Yeah. And from here on out, we got all the dog tags in this room. We don't need to worry about that at all. But we still have the bombs to take care of. In extreme difficulty, there's actually three here. There's one above, as we've seen here, one below. And then there's one further all the way to the left at the bottom level. I'm also going to make sure that we get some extra ammo here, because ammo is such a valuable resource for here, especially on the high difficulty. So we're going to make sure that we have as much as we can. Especially because in uh, Shred F, I actually missed one of the ammo packs as well, so I'm actually kind of oh, further yeah. behind than I'd like to be, but true, true, I true. should have enough ammo, even though I had already missed one, so it should be good to go. Because I think by like the end of the game, I have quite a bit extra, just because like, you know, I'm very superstitious. Because I've had points in the past where I've like finished um, dog tag runs, and I've just been so low on ammo. And yes. definitely one shot for the very end of the game. That's very, very important. Guys <laughs> oh. on the stairway, unfortunately, you have to walk a little bit lightly over. walk over him. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on to the CD bridge. There's another guard and his dog tag, but also a camera. So we got to be careful here to not immediately walk into the camera. Wait a second. Ooh, let's see. And now we're going to follow along the wall, and now we're good to go. Another day shot, love to see it. 
Freeze. MGS2 and the Twin Snakes, the remake of Metal Gear Solid 1 in the MGS2 engine, are the only games really where we can connect these dog tags. So um, I'm happy that we're here today to show this fantastic category, which is severely underrun, but you know, always a great chance to present it to you. Gotta start somewhere, right? You gotta start here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So now that we're pretty much done with most of the bombs, Sensor B has now spawned, which is what we actually need to find the final bomb, well, the second final bomb, I second guess, because there's a final final one later on, but <clears throat> exactly. thankfully for um, like, like um, this difficulty, it's actually fairly easy to actually spot, unlike on the other difficulties where it's a bit actually trickier, to be honest. So I guess that's like the message, like, oh man, I'm playing on the lower difficulties and it's been so <laughs> tricky and like, go to streams like, wait, where is it? And then it's just right in front of you the whole time, I guess. <laughs> uh, I guess that was the idea behind it. Oh yeah. Very mean trick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final call here, as we see, and then just enough time to make it back. 200 seconds, oh my god. That's like nothing. Yeah. Once again, going to take off this cipher, and we're also going to shoot a magazine empty for the Sokom, because we're going to use it later as a strat once we go to the fortune fight. As we're here as well, just get the chaffs, super useful item here, and now it's basically just a run all the way back. So if you have a few donations, hit it. Absolutely. I have a $15 donation from Strafe Machine saying, oh. Yo, Tyler, good luck on the run. Thank it's you. too bad I couldn't meet you over there. Hopefully in the near future I will come over to America and we can finally meet. Best regards, your doofus machine. <laughs> 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 we have a $5 donation from Taker Player saying, Yo, ESA and Bracken, GG on the practice run and good luck sees on the marathon run. Hmm. By the way, this guard wasn't a work accident. It yeah, didn't yeah. count as a kill. <laughs> Gravity killed him. It was not us. <laughs> yep. There's time for some more? Yes, yeah, sure. Yes. Okay, perfectly. A $10 donation from Theory saying, good luck with the run, Tyler. A $20 donation from Zero Sierra saying, good luck, Bracken. Enjoying the run so far. Good comms between you and House Test. And another $5 donation from Blue Metal saying, be careful with that controller, Tyler. We've seen what happens to Ocelot with Liquid's arm. Good luck <laughs> on the run, bud. Thank you so much, Blue everyone. Metal, because, um, you know, my main controller was kind of weird, and I was like, hey, can I borrow a controller? And he, you know, happily sent me one right before I actually left, so shout out to, um, to um, Blue Metal for letting me borrow his controller. <laughs> yep. All right, so said, you know, we're now uh, at the bottom of Strut A once again, and as we said in the beginning, these first two guards, they're only there for the very first time, and that's why we don't need to get the dog tags, because there's no gun that we can have that early. All right, that's the bomb taken care of. And now we got to get ready for the next boss fight. The first boss fight of this game, which, I mean, it's not really a fight. It's, it's like an like boss almost, waiting yeah. it out. Yes, fortune, lady luck, <laughs> as uh, Snake likes to proclaim. Uh, we cannot hit her at all because um, bullets basically just fly around her. But she can hit us a lot. And especially on extreme difficulty, we got to make sure that we do not get hit. I think on extreme, we have uh, like one shot that we can take. But after that, it's game over. So. We're going to play as clean as possible here. And this is where we're going to use this so-called pop-out strat. While we are leaning against an object and we can lean around it, we just need to hold down the square button. And because we're empty, we're not actually shooting our gun empty. Which leads us to this great situation where we do this pop-out animation, which gives us iframes so we do not get shot. But at the same time, we can do this for so long as we are standing there. We don't rely on ammo. If we would have ammo in here, we said he would need to reload at some point. But because our gun's empty, we can just do that same motion without needing to watch our ammo count. So this is not a glitch, this is actually intended that when we do this pop-out, we actually do have iframes. And, and we have to be very careful because she can actually get a uh, very quick shot off here, so once it starts to raise the gun up, then immediately pop out because it can be fast. And right there, she actually didn't do it, but one time during practice here at at a, like um, ESA, she actually did it, and it was very spooky, and I completely forgot about that. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah, she has a very small chance to actually do a very quick shot on you and kind of catch you off guard. But yeah, for the most part, it's just you know pop out, shoot in the five frames, and yeah. And, and now they're shooting the sparrows on the side. We know the run's over. Uh, the fight's over. <laughs> the run not. <laughs> the fight is over. Not yet. Yeah. And now we're just waiting here to have this Cody call come in, being like, "Hey, there's another bomb." All right, I guess we're gonna do that later. <laughs> Once again, we're going to be met with another timer here, another 200 seconds, but thankfully we know exactly where we need to go. On our way to the next boss fight, or Fat Man, we also have one more dark tag to take care of. That's the one in Strider that we ignore initially. But thankfully though, he's very easy to get. 
Watch out here, there's two claymores on this corner here, so we're gonna use the box to be a little bit tighter around corners, avoiding them, and then we're good to go. Oh, I'm back here. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'll leave myself then. Thanks for opening up the door. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, so um, actually, I'm um, going to the um, to to the like box. Actually, makes them either run away or uh, stay in place. So you'll see me do that a couple times just to yep. quickly get by them. And actually, right here, I'm going to take a small detour to grab that ammo that I actually missed earlier. Make sure to do that because <laughs> I just want to make doubly sure that I, you know, absolutely not absolutely. have any mishaps at at uh, the end. So I'm just gonna. I'm pretty sure, yeah, you're gonna use the coolant spray here to distract him again. We're gonna hold him up and then take care of him. And then we still have enough time here to really get this extra box. So right at the end, there's one situation where we need at least one bullet in our M9. I have a save on my Xbox where I exactly am at zero, <laughs> and I'm stuck there, I'm like, okay, what do I need to do now? Because we cannot do a trick. We'll get there when we get there, but yeah. yeah. You wanna have at least one shot at the end. So as before, use the box to I go around the corner mainly, and then just wait here on the bridge, wait for the cipher to completely go almost off screen here, and go. There we go. All right, going into the strategy, gonna not be seen by this guy just to be totally safe. It probably doesn't need to be that safe. But, you know. Yep. We're gonna shoot the wall here, so this guy actually starts just raising his hand towards his radio, and then we're gonna quickly shoot him with the M9, cart wheel into him, that knocks him out immediately, and then we're just gonna leave. Yep. And now here's one of the things that absolutely confused me when I saw that for the first time. If you're, if you've played just a little bit of MGS2, you know the bomb is all the way back there at the heliport. Well, on Sol US, the bomb is right here between all the containers, saving us basically a little bit of time, I would say. Yeah, a couple. Because we don't need to walk so, that yeah. far. And now let's get ready for the so-called Fat Man fight. He calls himself that, I guess. Uh, it's his <laughs> archer's name. He's an artist. And uh, he's actually putting us on a little bit of time stress here. He has two bombs that he placed that we need to take care of very quickly. And then ideally, we're going to just work with him to give him a few quick headshots with the M9. As I said, despite the big boss rank being dead, we're still going to follow the strats in order to beat every boss non-lethal. And we've taken care of all the bombs here. So now it's basically just trying to chase after him. We need to shoot him down with the SOCOM so he falls over. And then follow up with a few and nine shots. Very nice that he follows us directly here to the SOCOM box so we have more ammo. Oh, yeah, there you go. And ideally he's never getting too far away. There you go. So uh, he doesn't find any new bombs. Nope. There you go. I think three more shots and then we're good to go. Okay, so one more cycle. There we go. He's been being very nice today. Oh, hey. oh yeah, very nice. <laughs> Despite that one last thing, yeah, very nice. And the good thing is we only need one shot, so even if you missed a quick one, you still have a long time until he actually fully gets up. All right, time for another dog tag. Let's not forget about this one. This is the Stillman dog tag that Fatman drops. Oh, I missed it. I'll get a second. Oh, that's fine. It's going to be cool now. <laughs> And taking care also of the last bomb here. No more bombs for us. Yep. We're done with that. <laughs> and grab that one earlier, so yep. Yep, we're good to go. And now it's time for the next big segment of the game. And also plenty of new dog tags that we need to collect. First things first, though, we got to have way more codex and dialogues. So how about one or two donations? Absolutely. I have a $20 donation from Solid Spider Snake oh. saying... Are you telling me this bottle sprays coolants on C4s to defuse them? And another $10 donation from Snark saying whoop whoop. Hey, thank you everyone. All right, we're almost done with these dialogues. It's, it's one of those big story games where you just sit down and like, okay, I can skip, I can skip, I can skip. Almost out here, though. Almost out here. Only a couple more. Yep. What I personally think also is good that you have a little bit of downtime after yeah, these parts. Sure. <laughs> Although I still have to mash, so I mean, is it really a break if I keep having to like you know press my finger? At on least the I need <laughs> to not explain something <laughs> for a few minutes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And here we go. All right, preparing our menus again. Gonna get our guns out and the box ready. And the first thing that we need to do is now, after we got our so-called BDU, the enemy uniform, is also getting the enemy weapon, the AKS, which. Is back again in Stratlev Warehouse, so we're gonna take a little bit of a walk south. Fun fact, playing on the very easy difficulty, this AKS is not just in the warehouse, it's also thankfully then 
in the uh, Shell 2 core. Save us a little bit of time. And I almost forgot to say, of course, we're playing all dog techs. Yeah, Thank so, you for just yeah. doing it and <laughs> proving me wrong. Now is the time actually to also get more dog techs. I almost forgot about that. Yep. Yeah, when I was uh, making the routes for easy and very easy and normal, I would do it even later. But Tier 4 Extreme is actually very useful as we picked up the box too. To go back now and then go from strat B to B, C, C, and so forth, and then go to strat F. Technically, you actually could do it later, and it's about the same time. The only problem is that you have you going through a caution oh. after leaving the shell one core, so it's a bit riskier. Oh. Uh, there you go. Rolling him again, just make completely sure that he's not shooting <laughs> or anything. Yeah, I'm just gonna be no risk taken. Yeah. But yeah, of course, on extreme in this instance, he would yeah. do this a little bit for safety. Risky. Yes. Also, if I miss the guy first time, he's right here around the corner. Freeze. Yep. In this instance, though, we got his dog test, so we're good to just... Yep. And yet again, the guy on the bridge, that's super easy for the day shot. If I somehow miss him, then I could get him right here again because he is... Yep. ...doing himself right here, but now he's walking this way. That's one of the great things about it because we have to go back anyway because of these new guards. So we have basically two chances for some of these. All right. Yep. Strati, we already have taken care of everyone. Yep, just watch out for the camera here. The camera alerts on us a little bit late. Uh, for any other difficulty where we don't really watch our stats, it's fine. But for Extreme here, where we aim for the big boss rank, of course, this alert that comes in happens during the fade out. It does not affect the gameplay, as in the alert carries over, but it still counts for the statistics. So we want to make sure to not get seen by that camera. And there's one more DE connection bridge dog tag that we're going to get here. The first one that we've taken care of as we were going uh, clockwise, uh, counterclockwise. <laughs> is at the bottom here, and then the second one, that's the new one here, so we're going to drop just behind him, hold him up, and then afterwards, leave back to Strati. All right, that's the backtracking section done. Now we just proceed as normal, which there's still one more duck time before we go into the core, which is another very tough section. Yep. Make sure I do have enough ammo, because I actually need a little bit of uh, SOCOM ammo, you know, for uh, this one coming up and a little bit later as well, so. Yep. Wait. I'm going to wait here for a moment. Yep. There we go. Now the second guy will notice us, but it's totally fine because it yeah. takes forever to follow us. And as long as he doesn't alert on us, we're still good. And going from uh, this direction is a bit different. Gonna actually wait for this first cipher to be right underneath us, and yep. go over to the left-hand side here and shoot it right in the gun, as it will just automatically blow up. Yep. These cyphers are very tough. You can shoot them out where their like wings are, but if you just shoot out the gun, they're basically oh, what's my purpose? Where's the butter? They're just gonna explode, so that's why it's easy, just one shot. I'm gonna wait here and put on the BDU and do two nice cartwheels, and here's another guard that comes in right as the AKS is here. We're gonna shoot the wall and then get his dog tag. Okay, I'm gonna here and just do a groin punch here real quick. All right, now that we have our new gun, our full disguise is complete, and uh, using it quite a bit here in the next section because this next one is quite a bit complicated, especially for yep. the first and the second room. I'll try my best to explain it well <laughs> this time. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, first of all, we're gonna walk all the way here to the left. Thankfully, these panels on the floor, while they do fall off, uh, they will get restored later. So it doesn't matter that we're gonna take out uh, so many of them immediately. Though when we go back to the second time, then we're gonna watch out that we uh, try to uh, do as few panels as possible. As we enter this room now, there's a Cody call coming in, and we specifically put the BDU off, especially because on lower hardware like the PlayStation 2, putting the BDU on actually costs us some low times. And we're going straight here with getting the attention of this guard. The second one is also right here, and now we're going to hold up both at the same, at the same time. And we're going to wait here. We don't want to bounce into them before actually we've gotten the dog tags. If we bounce into them and they have not dropped the dog tags, they basically get reset. I'm fast enough, this guy will actually notice me. Yep, right before he actually turns around, so it saves me time for actually chasing him down. So yep. this room is fairly nice. Really nice. And depending on where this last dog tag dropped, I can maybe do a nice little cartwheel into it. Okay. Yay, yeah, yeah, yeah. very nice. Very nice. <laughs> points. Yeah, we gotta get seen by this camera in a full suit so where they know, okay, you can go in this elevator. If there's anything wrong, we don't have the BDO on, we don't have the AKS on, there's immediately an alert. All right, going down to B2. Here, we're going to be on a tough timer. We're going to um, take care of the first guard by just horning him up and get his dog tag. And then the dog tag as an item will stay on the screen or in the game for 30 seconds. He will drop it now. And as soon as it drops, now it's 30 seconds timer going. We're going to be very fast. We're going to go to these two guards here and hold them up at the same time. And shoot them in the body so they have enough time to drop the dog tag and then immediately fall asleep. 
Fist number four. Again, his dog tag. And now that they're slowly loading their hands, also the tranquilizer is effective. We got the D mic that we need, of course, as a story item. And now we're gonna come back to the right side, and there's still the dog tag, so we met the 30 second requirement. Nice. I think there's about four to five seconds of like leeway, but you know, the actual like cycles in the extra computer is very tight timing, so. Yep. Not easy to do that all in one go. And we're not done yet, because we still have one more section that's also kind of rough. And another thing for Toll US, in order to skip this cutscene fast, you have to press the X button one, one time. If you mash, it will just not want to skip it. I don't know why. Yep. So one press, and it just skips it. <laughs> there we go. So there's three more guards here, and we normally would just knock at the wall, get one guard to come close, and then just drag in front of the sensor, and we can enter. But because we want to have the dog tags right now, we're going to actually take care of them right now. And we need to wake up one more later then. There you go, got him. It's a tough guy, so we're gonna shoot over his head. And so because that guy actually fell that way, uh, I'm going to be doing a bit faster by rolling him into that guy nah. to actually wake him up faster, because otherwise I would have to cool and spray because they'd be kind of close to each other, but now it saves me time. We got him. What was that sound? Once he says, what was that sound? Then we do two punches That's over a bit here, and then I'll cook everything and go to the retinal scan. There we go. Once again, always we when we uh, change rooms, we want to unequip the BDU ideally, so just to load in a little bit faster. There we go. Now we're gonna play Find Ames. So because we're playing on New Game Plus, um, this character Ames is not in this fixed location that he would always be in New Game, but actually he's in one of uh, 26 positions here where he can be on the room. He can be in the top right, which would be awesome for us, saving us a lot of time. Oh. Not the case. So we're gonna keep walking around the room until we find him. I don't think I saw him in the top left. He may be down here. Let's see. Okay, maybe he was. He, he was just stuck, stuck further away. Oh, it's literally yep. the same as in your practice earlier. Yeah, I love in the it. practice, yeah, literally the same exact position. Unfortunate. Yep. And the weird thing is that, you know, after all these cutscenes and, like, you go back and, like, you're, like, also walking towards you, he's in the standard position where, um, you know, they would normally have him at, which he's only there on a um, new game. On new game plus and above, then he's just randomized, <clears> which is... A bit unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. Yep. All right. And if you think this game is lots of backtracking, you might be right, considering how often we're going to visit Stratav, because we are, after this segment, going back for the fourth time to just get another weapon. We already got the M9, we already got the AKS. Now, after this, we also need the PSG1 sniper. But before that, here's another fun beat effect about Saw US. We cannot skip this cuts, and we just got to wait it out until the timer runs out. There we go. Now we can continue. <laughs> yeah, so like normally, you know, as soon as I like, switch on the gun, then it would just immediately end right there. But for some reason on Soul US, they're just like, oh no, we're going to have it go the full way. Yep. Same with the end of the tanker when uh, we have the little bit of speech that actually fully yeah. plays out. All right, a little fun fact here. If you press in the button, you also have iframes, and that's very useful for us because we don't need to wait for the guard to be knocked out. So we're just going to be pressing the button, get shot, doesn't count, and then we just don't turn around and take care of this guard with the M9. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to uh, use the chaff because there's plenty of these cameras here and we're just going to save some time. And what we're going to additionally do is we're going to take care of one of these guards here on the corner. I'm going to shoot them quickly. Very nice. And then while the others will spot us and see us, they don't fully alert on us. So we have enough time to just get away. Plus with the chaff active, they also can't call in the alert as well. Now here's the tricky part, as I said, we're going to take care of these ciphers, and now we're going to do plenty of these cartwheels over this bridge to only knock out a few of these panels. Looks very good. And uh, while we're talking about copies anyway, a um, little fun fact, we actually are... There okay. We <laughs> <laughs> we're also walking a little bit faster by doing these copies or aerials, um, because for Raiden's animation purposes, just a little bit faster than walking in a straight line. With Snake and the Tanker, we don't do that because his roll animation is actually slower than just walking. Nicely done. We just quickly went to the box, so he immediately caught the alert, but then we pop out, use the M9 and give him a quick headshot. And now that's the final time. That's us have done. No need to come back. But there's one more guard left, and now he's done. There we go. He's hear us from uh, downstairs. <laughs> and at least when it comes to plant, we just seen here he has 43 dog tags. That's exactly what we need, because after the segment, moving on into the Harrier fight, we do not come back to um, Shell 1 for a long time. So it's good that we know right now we have all the dog tags in this chapter so far. And this room is 
filled with guards, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, I had chosen to do the backtracking later rather than, or sorry, earlier rather than later because, you know, there's so many guards in here to actually worry about that. Yeah. It can just get a bit hectic at times. So I was like, oh, let me just, you know, be safe and just do it as early as possible. It's like, oh, hey, they, they actually spawn right after Fat Man, so let me just go and do it right then. Yep. There we go. This caution takes very long to fully fade out, and only then after this caution is gone, all the extra guards are gone, so absolutely makes sense to do these extra dog tags earlier. Right, here we go. Putting on a BD again. We're gonna just train this guy with a few shots. And now it's time for the next segment of this game. <sighs> what can we say? Well, we're on this bridge here between Shell 1 and 2, this connection bridge, and they plaster this over with so much explosives, we're going to take out all these sensors. And we're playing on extreme difficulty, that means we got to take care of 13 of these sensors. Two of them are on flying ciphers that are actually also going away quickly, so we're going to make sure to hit these very quickly and only hit the sensor, not the cipher itself, or else the whole bridge would explode. And then we're going to just basically move around here with a few of these that are very visible. We have one behind this flag here. Fun fact, with second control, you can move the flag. Don't need to do that here at all, of course. Oh, this one. There we go. We're gonna quickly turn around, because there's one behind us. And there's even more here, such as hidden underneath the bridge, where you need to be on the side, and you need to stand on your tippy toes. Nice one. And then the final 13th one is that one, and that's all the sensors on this bridge. Right. Good luck for the Harrier. <laughs> yes, I only need it because unfortunately on extreme difficulty they actually ramped up the RNG as if this fight wasn't bad enough as you know many people know this is one of the tougher fights and for some difficulties the only fight that really matters and yep. they made it worse for extreme because there's RNG now if you do it fast. Yep. So first off we're going to start here with ideally five shots to the Herium. One, two, three, one across, one overhead. Dunk. Got him, very nice. And now we're going to wait here. Now the Herium will move all the way to the side. And we've got to find him here because on this monitor is very bright now. Got it. Okay. Uh, oh, Jesus. Okay. There you go. And we got lucky here. This Harrier does not go underwater. It can sometimes be this is the RNG part that he meant that the Harrier goes under the water and then comes back out again. And thankfully, it didn't happen this time, so we could actually take a clean shot on him. Now he's the so called die shot. We're going to be on the lower level, and there's enough time for us to just go like this. And we're going to hang on to him and then turn to the left, which is again so US exclusive. And all later versions we don't need to do. We got the shot very nice. So far looking very good, hitting all the chances that we had so far. He's back here, which is good. Oh yeah, I can see that there. You see it as, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, I adjusted the monitor, but it's okay. I'm not gonna go for the pop out one here. I'm gonna wait for him to pass by just because I had to take a bit longer on that one. I'm gonna miss that one because I got lock on oh, right good. away. It's okay. There you go, there's one more. And now he's going to go into the so-called missile phase. So for the missile phase, we have one or two shots that we can take in, and then after that, we're going to once ago go back again to the so-called pop-out strat. So we're just going to go over here and shoot. In fact, we have 15 shots here, so if you spread them out well, we are constantly in iframes, and we don't need to worry about that at all. He's done now with his shots, and we're going to use as much time as we can here in order to shoot the Harrier. And there's a little bit of window that we have. Yeah, that sometimes he likes to just kind of drift around a little bit. Ah. Almost. Uh, maybe get it right here. Nice. That's okay. a fight. GG's. <laughs> GG's. Nice. Okay, okay. Yeah, for that one, you have to be really quick, and that's why I actually kind of anticipated by unequipping there, because I'm like, oh, okay, about right here is where you would go to the cutscene, and luckily you got through that. Nicely done. And from here on out, it's going to be just like a, any other regular run. For the most part, for the most part. There's, there's also not going to be much of dog text that we're going to collect here. A quick jump here. Yay, we okay. survived. <laughs> it's always like your heart drops because you gotta do this leap of faith here. I did it and we're gonna do this. Ah, didn't get the cutscene skip, that's fine. A few frames that we lose. And now here, there's a few guards coming out that are gonna be very keen on spotting us. But thankfully, having the BDU on, and this is what the game never tells you. Having the BDU on actually makes their sight a little bit shorter. And that gives us just enough range so we can just bypass them here at all while they're still looking at us. And that's only with the BDU. We're gonna keep it on for the entire time. I'm going to do a quick copy towards the ladder and go up here. Nicely done. Boom was kind of sus. Uh, I was like, eh, maybe I'll get spot here because my boom is a little slow, but it's okay. It's okay. That's time here. We're going to wait. And at the third window, do a copy to skip another cutscene. We're going to knock quickly on the wall here. This guy turns around. And now we're just going to use again animation cancel here to be slightly faster. 
Considering also here, when we do this little crouch walk, this is where it really counts, where only the first part of the animation is a little bit faster. And there we go. There's another cutscene that we need to skip. <laughs> you gotta let this play out. <laughs> and here we go, just taking care of the chaps, and we can just move on over. Time to meet the president. And here is another great thing coming up very soon, where I just say I love Sons of Liberty as a version. Not necessarily the US version, but at least the Japanese version is my personal favorite. But it has a very cool um, skit that we can do and a cool glitch. Before all that, we just get a little bit of dialogue and codex. So, how about one or two donations? We currently don't have any oh. available, but I can point out that we are currently still having a few bits and incentives open. Uh, the first upcoming one will be the Sonic Triple Trouble 16-bit run uh, for a two players, one controller style, but have them switch controls with each additional $10 donation. So kind of similar to the $25% uh, $25 madness we've just been through. <laughs> so we're, we're getting there. Let's go. All right, so here's the little skip that I meant. In Sons of Liberty, if you're prone in front of an elevator, you can just press triangle and then whoop, you're out of bounds. You immediately drop down. And only in this room, thankfully, um, it is also that we have actually hitbox where we can stand on walk on. And this saves us plenty of time because we don't need to swim at all. We can literally just walk to the end where the Nikita is and then just come back out again. Yeah, so you'll see later that the swimming in like this game, especially on the PS2 version, is very slow. It's almost like you're swimming to like molasses almost with like how <laughs> slow it is thanks to the frame rate. Like, so, you yeah. know, the fact that you are mostly able to skip most of the swimming section is very nice. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, now we little fumbled there. Yeah, we won't have the Nikita on the active and the Stinger on previous because we're going to shoot the wall quickly. Uh, on extreme difficulty, at least, the uh, president will be snoozing and he will be right next to the electric panel. And let me tell you, that president is very um, keen to explode. Let's pull like this. <laughs> we're going to lower him quickly over here, waking up with the shot. And then we're going to go over to the south of this room where we're going to shoot with the Nikita into the vent and then try to navigate through it without any problems. Let's see how it goes. Because of a left turn, then right turn, then left, then a right. little bit higher, and then curve around in the 180. And now ideally the president will see us and walk forward. Very nice, away from the electric panel, and now we can have it exploded without killing the president. Thank you for your service. <laughs> yeah, so like depending on like the actual speed, he like can do some weird stuff randomly, like he can fall down on the ground, which will be in front of, of like the actual panel, and then even if you shoot it, it'll still count as a kill, but if he does the same thing crouched, right. then Doesn't it's fine. Count. I don't know why, but you know, <laughs> Game just whatever. Weird. And then if you're fast enough, then he'll just run towards it, and you can kind of yeah, just dodge it a little slowly bit. Slowly so. and there you go. Yeah. And trust me, every speedrunner has killed him multiple times, no matter what. Even on very easy way, it takes even two shots. Yes. I managed <laughs> to do that as well. He's just the president, he does whatever he wants, I guess. Ironically enough, now it doesn't matter because he's still dead after all <laughs> the story bits. <laughs> oh well. And uh, here's a little fun fact. Uh, normally, I think in later versions, um, once we get to the next cutscene, uh, Snake will be like, ah, take this picture. But we have never taken those. But in this version, it looks like. Yep, that was exactly the same one the from way back when at the tanker, yeah. We took that photo, but. And now I want to say it was like the Itchy Collection. They like, kind of took that out to have like a stock photo almost. Yep. But yeah, for like all of the other versions, pretty much it's like the extra photo that, that like, you took, which is yep. very cool, very cool. There's little details, it's just what makes this exactly. game feel so special. All right, now we're done with all that business. We got a new uh, door card, so we can actually move on in the story. And I mean, where we're going, we don't need necessarily doors, but um, we're gonna go and once again use the swim skip to our advantage, because normally we'll go down into the water and now do a very long underwater segment where we swim, swim, swim. But as we've seen in the first time, we're gonna once again use the swim skip go out of bounds and then instead of going right around where the normal path is we're just going to go two times to the left and then walk south uh, immediately uh, hitting the stairs that lead up to the door to vamp so see that in action go prone triangle and if you have a sons of liberty version you can do that at home that's nothing special go prone press triangle you're out of bounds super easy getting back in bounds a little bit more tricky but yeah. not too much you want to lay on the ground here do a so-called cool advice or uh, alternatively you can also just double punch until you slowly move through this phase and uh, do not do that anywhere else, kind of like besides here, because you like can do that in a show one core, but you will fall directly down into the void of yep. nothingness and be soft locked. So yeah, <laughs> not good. Unfortunately, only actually usable here.
Yeah, very thankful that this is a thing, how it works here. All right, vamp, non lethal strategy. How do we do this? Well, it's very simple. Um, if you've ever seen a Metal Gear 1 run, this is basically just a back and forth punch strategy. Vamp is relatively similar. Shoot in the head to give it initially some um, stamina damage here. And now we're going to wait for him to pop out. Once he goes out of the water, he's a little bit in iframe state. And while we're hanging here, he's going to try to slice us. And thankfully, once we go up, we're in iframes during this little slice animation, and then the real fun begins. We're gonna loop it around and gonna do a few punches on him. There you go. And I do you do like a, a minimum six, you can do up to eight, sometimes it's nine or ten. And we basically just do that the whole time here, left, down to the right, so close there. There you go. There you go. And we always have to go away because we're not going to survive that slash. Alright, right there. Oh! Oh, oh no! I just say I'm not talking directly, so we're gonna wait a little bit until he actually comes out of the water and then he'll be jump around for a little bit, so. That's fine. Yeah, just a bit of a time waste. We'll get back in the water because otherwise he'll yep. be very close to the grip. We so. want to bait him into the situation once again. Bounce, bounce, bounce. And then. Alright. Oh. I still have a walk to us. No, he's upstairs, I think. Now he's here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, that's why you do not want him to go back in the water, because he takes a long time to just get back up here. Yep. Oh and just for one time for safety, I'm going to stand on top of him, slash, do the full combo. All right, there we go. Hey. End of the kick. Yep. With this final kick, we're also going to save like three seconds, because he's immediately falling over instead of just standing there and then whoa, falling over. <laughs> all right, so far so good. Taking care of all the bosses and non lethal styles. Now it's time to meet Emma. Now, if you play this game casually, you think, ah, oh, Emma. Why? This is such a long segment, and uh, even as speedrunners, we do agree. If you find a skip, this is worth a lot of money, so uh, join the Discord once again, the Metal Gear Speedrunners, and um, yeah, help us find a skip for this segment. It would be very nice. Typically, for like the like higher level runs, you would want to get the body armor, but because we are actually on extreme, we actually have a lot more health to actually work with, and for like what I'll be doing, I won't be taking one extra shot, if any, so I'm going to actually be skipping the body armor, but we're having a book. A book. Very important. Can the gods even read? I wouldn't really Maybe they're it. just looking at the picture. Probably approach it. Yeah, it's probably for our intents and purposes, we're going to use the book for a very specific scene uh, in order to get even more dog tags. Shadow Supply would in that instance, who helped us, uh, I think, for TTS as well. Yes. Around yes. that. And um, yeah, it's coming back here again in MGS2. So we're just going to quickly go through a few bits of story. And now, for the first time, we actually have to do the swim. <coughs> I have no way with this as well, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's very slow, and that's why we would like to skip it. Yeah. Which will. And, you know, maybe in the future we can do some kind of skit where we don't have to swim with her because, you know, this is also a long section where, like, you know, a lot of codec calls happen and such, but... Yeah. Fun fact, the first time you leave this room, you don't even need to drag her over the door. In this room, we can just go immediately, and it still counts for the next room. Okay, there we go. Nice <laughs> later. And then more stories and bits are happening. So in preparation for the next few guards, we have already the book in our hand, and... Um, there's a specific order for the next um, room in the 1F floor. We're going to get six dog tags in total. After that, we have one on the bridge, two more in strut L, one in strut E, and one later in arsenal gear. So there's plenty of stuff still to do here in terms of all dog tags. Snake, you're coming there's in. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, there's a lot of cutscenes here, because, like, you know... My like, kind of unfortunate thing for like pacing is that you know the run has a very like like um, smooth pacing, but then once you get Emma, it just goes down to a just slug like pace yeah. and it picks up again at the very end, thankfully. But yeah, like once you get Emma, like the game really does slow down quite a bit, unfortunately. Yep. Slow down just like the PS2 does because of all of these particle yep. effects. <laughs> and only there were actually a like little small cutscene here. Showing um, Stillman's dead body, but because we actually swim skip, we actually skip that entirely. You yep. always have to open the actual latch to go to the next room anyway, so. Yep. From the PSG-1T, we'll be using that later for Vamp 2 and for the Twilight Siping section. Yep. Watch it here, there's a few of these mines. Yep. There we go. Got stuck on the door a little bit. <laughs> yeah, even swimming, you think, ah, swimming is straightforward. No, even there, you can lose a little bit of time, so. All right, make sure to not get hit from this mine, very particular. And, and now it's just bringing it to the end, basically. And uh, thankfully, you know, while our uh, friend here may lose some health, as long as it doesn't go below the letter A, then we're good to go. And like, she won't start complaining because if you get her too low, then like she'll start to like whine and like you know wanting to yeah. like not go with you, and it's really annoying. And you have to wait for her to actually sit down to like regain health again. 
indeed. And now, here you think, ah, oh, we need to use the cooling spray to get rid of the bugs. Well, we're not gonna be our best gentleman behavior. We're just gonna uh, give a little uh, help from behind and then just drag along. I think she's fine. It's probably, fine. yeah. We're just moving on. No need here to take care of the bugs. All right, dog tags time. Let's get ready here. In the beginning, we actually gonna get spotted first from a guard as we drag him along, but we have a book here. And this book, as I said, I mean, I don't know if they're gonna read it, but at least they're gonna stare at it, and that's good for us. There's a guard on the top left that just noticed us, and he will continue to walk to the right. And then once he finds the elevator, he's like, oh, a book? I wanna read that. That gives us enough time for this next guard, as we can see here, to holding up. There you go, there's the book. To get his dog tag, and we'll now be knocked out. And the guard now, actually, will just be knocked out and lay with face first down. As we drag ammo here, there will be a cutscene playing, and the upper guard will come out of that elevator. Both of these guards still have the dog tags, so we're gonna quickly go here. And oh, we don't see the funny version. Sometimes he <laughs> falls forward, his face is like literally at the elevator like this. <laughs> so the upper guard will now wake up the first one that we knocked out, giving us enough time to walk up to him here. And then we're gonna hold them both up at the same time, give them a little body shot after we get their dog tags. There we go. And now we just copy both of them to knock them out immediately. Very particular position that's that they landed in. Very nice, yeah. That's the first three out of six done in this room here. After all that, we're gonna bounce quickly into Emma's to have a stand up quickly, and now we're gonna drag on, and there's two guards right next to us here. Ooh. Not ideal. Normally he would be a little bit different in the cycle. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, he caught in the radio, so that's gonna be trouble here. Yep, we're gonna get in trouble. Uh, we'll figure this out, don't worry. <laughs> oh, of course. We'll do it live. Exactly. The good thing about dog tags in general is, once you grab them once, it doesn't matter what happens afterwards. If you take a continue, you don't need to get them again. That's one of the good parts about it. Oh, no. So we're gonna... Uh, don't. Oh, come on, come on, come on. on. Speed up! Okay, okay. Yeah, so we have backup guards here now. They wake up the first guard, and then ideally they're just gonna go... I think they're just gonna run away, yeah. Seems to be good. I'm gonna wait just a little bit, make sure this guy is not gonna be doing anything funny. Uh huh. Oh, hey, he saw me. There. Right, this time we already have his dog tag, so we can just take it out like this. All right, okay. back back here to our regular skill dog tag. Okay. <laughs> We're poor human. And I'm just gonna wake up this again, one. Unfortunately, yeah, like, it is I'm tired of this. He's taking too long. <gasps> yeah, this one's a tough guy. Thankfully, though, the six guard at the end is ha has not yet spawned, so we can just do it like this. No, I got we'll her a little bit to make sure she gets on fast for us. And then we are. Right. Okay. We're back on track. We got Oof, it. Okay. And now we're just going to go all the way here. We just grab along. No problem. And thankfully, the six guard is super easy to deal with because he doesn't even spot us right away. Yep. This is more than enough time to holding up from the side, get a stock tag, put him to sleep, and now we can just leave. There's another little fun fact that we're going to do here. Um, other than the HD version, don't do this on the HD version. Every other version, we can do this little trick where we bump Emma over the door without holding her hand. This means in the next room, she will be put in one of the default situations because the game's like, oh, you're not holding her hand, I guess I put it there. A little bit further ahead, saving us some time so we don't need to drag all along. And we have two survivors to take care of and one guard, <laughs> so I'm gonna move up a little bit because actually in one of my runs a couple days ago, I accidentally locked on her even though she was next to me. I don't know how it happened, so I've been very superstitious as of now and I'm like walking a couple steps forward and I'm like, I do not want that to happen again. <laughs> I blame Sogue specifically for this. Yes, yes. It's just the beta yeah. version, who knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna drag over here. There's a fire at the button that we need to um, put up first, but uh, of course, let's not forget there's also a dog tag here. So we're gonna quickly over to this guy, get his dog tag and then put him to... There we go. All right, and then we're gonna move over to the fire and take it out with the cooling spray. Unfortunately, we're not playing on the Japanese version, so we did not get the cool ringtone that they ex it, that yeah. um, they like got exclusively. But yeah, right. so JP or oh, Sons of Loop Japanese yeah. is the only version where when you hear and you get a ringtone, it's actually the Metal Gear Solid 2 theme. Really cool. Never came back in every other version, not even in any other JP version. So I'm really sad. Maybe one day we can put it maybe in the PC version if that ever comes back on sale. So <clears throat> I'm going to use my stage here quickly say, please, can I be bringing back the games? <laughs> That's all. Moving on, dog tag business. There's two more dog tags here. We're going to quickly knock on the wall to get this first guard to notice us. We're going to get Emma here a little bit in position. I'm going to use the cooling spray here to quickly spray these guards and then there we go. Have enough time. Now the second guard will notice us here and it's like, oh, what the hell is happening? And now once the first guard is actually put to sleep, the second guard is like, oh, what the hell is this funny business? Okay, so he actually didn't notice 
he actual cooling spray, so I actually had to just run up to him as he was about to wake this guy up. Guys, sure. that real quick. Yeah. yeah, thankfully because he was looking on the floor, he didn't notice right away, so we just had the time window to quickly hold him up. All right, and then just move on and going to, unfortunately, about a, what is it, seven minute auto scroller almost, yeah. but an auto scroller that you can, of course, lose some time in, which hopefully I uh, do not, as I already have a bit of time lost just at the beginning of the run, but you know, I think we're doing good time. Yeah, yeah, 113, yeah, I think we're on pretty good pace right now. Uh, it's not bad at all, absolutely. So yeah, again, we want to invite you all, please use your money and help the charity here for Art Symbol Fund, and of course, there's also fun incentives that you can donate towards too, so. So, Mike, quickly handing it over, let us know about these. Thank you so much. We have indeed received a few more donations. First off, a $200 donation from Soundcheck without comment. Thank you so much. A $15 donation from Nick RP Green hey. saying, Great run, Bracken. It's always refreshing to see the games run in different and interesting ways. Looking forward to seeing future collectathons from you. And another $5 donation from Mario Kart Hero saying, Nano Machine, son. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone who donated. Yep. Yep. Yeah, on extreme difficulty, we have like a couple of these claimers to take care of. Uh, if Emma, there he is, it's just one of them, it's instantly game over. So we basically um, we have to treat it like a very slow moving train for like the next five and a half minutes. Trying to take off every of these distractions that we have here, move them out of the way. There's also guards coming in nets now, and we also don't want to use any more pentas. So we have only five, use one already on the shell one two bridge, and we have four more here that we can use now. There we go, got him. Oh, accidentally looked at Emma, that has a fall over set as well. Yeah, you did not want to look at her, she gets very nervous easily, and she yep, yep. can fall over, unfortunately. Stage fright. I mean, we're at ease, I went to yeah. 23, so of course, I can understand that. I would fall over as well if I wouldn't sit nice and yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, we're now moving on, and uh, we're taking care already of three of these guards, and they're still constantly spawning in more of these ciphers. The claimers, thankfully, already done. Don't need to worry about them at all, but we're still on the lockout here sometimes for these so-called ciphers yeah. that find around. Let's see here. Should be here soon. Yep. Now, if you're thinking, well, when Snake coming in to help us here? Well, we're playing on extreme difficulty, and <laughs> on this difficulty, Snake basically just comes around at the end. There's yeah. not really much he can help us anymore. It's like maybe one guard, maybe two ciphers, and that's maybe, it. Maybe on yeah. lower difficulties, he like helps you much, much earlier. Where it's like, okay, I maybe you can help me, but on yeah, yeah. but if you're like, like, good luck, you're on your own. <laughs> yeah, in contrast, on very easy. I think he would have caught already here. Yeah, it's and uh, especially like if we're doing like we have a great uh, speed one race culture, I think, where we just constantly one on ones or even multiple people. And if you have a very big advantage, you can be like, I'm going to call in Snake now and I maybe lose four seconds, but then at least you don't need to shoot at all anymore. For, because it's so early, there's so much time that he does everything for you. Oh, there's one. Right, there we go. We'll quickly shoot them in the gun, as we explained, not in the back, um, like, helicopter thing. <laughs> because it takes them out with just one shot. And we're standing constantly here on the PSG-1T, or tranquilizer ammo, because we need that more than anything else. The Cyphers, we have a little bit of time before they actually notice Emma and start shooting her, but the guards definitely um, start shooting her way earlier. And every time, of course, when it's oh. flared, there we go, she will stop, and as I said, we want to keep her moving as much as possible. I was waiting for the guards to spawn, because that's waiting for Emma to actually go on the pathway, and start seeing this one at the top left. So do top left, bottom right, bottom left, yep. and then once after the extra circles around, there'll be another one that will also circle around. Yep. What we can do, at least, to save a little bit on the pen test is we can quickly switch back and forth between the two sniper weapons. As you can see, it actually puts our aim back on track a little bit, so we don't immediately start shaking. And there we go. For this instance, of course, we're going to use one more pen test. Because this is basically the most that we have new guards coming in. So it's a little bit easier to zoom in, give it a quick headshot, there's this. Nicely done, and now we can move on. One more here, yep. There we go. Nice. Nice. All right. So okay. far, so good. And double checking that all of the claimers are uh, done because, like, you know, you would hate to get all the way here to the end and it's like, oh man, yeah, there's more claimers. And also, uh, shout outs to um, the red thermal goggles, only available in the PS2 versions. For some yes. reason, they made it only red here, and later on, they made them like actual thermal goggles where, like, you see, like, you know, the different, heat, uh, like, um, it's like heat levels, I guess. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, like heat levels. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's just about to reach that wall. See that pillar right here that I have my, yep, right yeah, there. There we go. Yep. Okay. 
Yeah, so as soon as she's starting to turn around this next pillar, there's another guard popping out, and Victoria is just one, so we can very quickly just yeah. aim over him. As long as we get him somehow enough, yeah. it's enough time for us that when he falls asleep. And there's at least, I think, two more ciphers coming out soon. Yes. We gotta still be careful and watchful here. Try not to spam too much because again, the flashing <laughs> yeah. a bit, but I want to say I am just a little bit. There we go, here he is. Oh, oh. Junior. There we go. There we go, got him. Yep. Nicely done. Yeah, we still have 15 shots here to take care of these. Oh, oh. Us. As we are constantly shaking, we do not want to use more Pantas, as I said. Um, it's a little bit tricky, especially on that distance without zooming in. But yeah, nicely done. And I think there's just one more as we come around here then. Well, I think there's going to be one more here, and then one more that's going to be coming behind the CIA. Right. But gotcha, gotcha. Not sure if the one behind us actually doesn't matter, but I always do it just in case. Because I, like, I just to be safe. It's at the very end, like, uh, I don't want it to <laughs> exactly. screw me up at the end. Like, uh. No, scroll, you know, you don't want to take any chances here, right? Absolutely. Although, Absolutely. she actually did follow for once, which technically is a time loss, because, like, you know, yeah. technically, like, like she's be walking the whole way. So that's the only part where, like, you technically, like, really lose time most of the time, unless you're just... There you go. There's adding. the call from Stank. Yep, yep. Super late in this whole thing. Can you hear me? I can help. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, yeah, mm, I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you see him right here. You can actually mess with him, too, but um, I don't I think want to take you can damage. even put this sleep, <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. That's the thing. Sometimes you just gotta do it yourself. Let's scan around here. There it is. There we go. Nice. One more over right here. I'm gonna wait for it to go just a little bit further down. Yep. So it lines up with my, my blink scope. <laughs> yep. It should be it. Oh, nice. Nicely cool. done. All right. All right, only thing I'm gonna do now is get off the ammo box, actually waste my ammo, because I want to start the fight with zero ammo, because I'm gonna be going over to the ammo at the start of the fight anyway, so. Yep. It is all set up and double checking. Yep, no yep. flame wars. Okay. <laughs> then we have still one pan test that we're going to use right at the start of this fight. Yep. And for intensive purposes, as soon as we reach the next fight, uh, Vam 2, we got to quickly shoot them in the leg, try and take them out as fast as we can. Non lethal. You can try to do it with headshots, but he will always like bounce back with his head and come yep. back forth. So using the leg is way safer because it doesn't move his leg at all or his body. All right, there all right, we, go. we go. Let's get ready for Vam 2. There we go, first things first, standing up, getting you on the ammo box. And then... Shooting the leg. Alright. There we go, that's Vam 2. Very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're back on track. Yep. So far, how many dog did we get? 52. That means we have two more to the maximum of 54 in this plant, sec uh, yeah, plant section. And so the fun fact is... This is the only guard that's basically brand new here after the sniper segment. We're gonna go upstairs, we will be back in the strut E. And there will be just another guard that's jamming out to music. Love to see it. You know, always enjoy your time when you're at work. We got Chaff and pain. Socom here, because we're actually gonna be shooting the wall next to him because his music is so loud that he can't really hear us too well or get walk up to him, so we're actually gonna just carefully Look at him go. right next to him. Oh. What the hell? Freeze. Oh my god. Don't throw him. Oh. Hello, where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> a little too close for comfort. A little too intimate. <laughs> All right, thank uh, you for go. the dog tag. Now we have one more left. left. Yep, one more one left. One more left. All right, once we go out of here, we're going to quickly throw a chaff here. We're going to wait for the first turret to move away. There we go. And now we're just going to go over the bridge here. And as I said, the panels actually will not come back from the ones that we knocked out earlier after Ames. We're gonna just do a few cobwebs over then, number fine. If you do the mistake of just walking over them straight and you come back after sniping and you're like, oh, what the hell, they're all gone. So you're gonna lean against the railing and like slowly move over there. It's a little Put bit all the ciphers out and then slowly do it across, yeah, yeah it's a pain. So, so definitely wanna be careful leaving the shell one core for the last time. Yes. All right. Time for the end game. Now, first things first, of course, we're gonna get stripped and everything will be taken away from us. Which is kind of good if you think about it from the all dog tags perspective because we don't have any weapon. Once again, we cannot hold up anyone and all the extra guards that we're going to meet in a few rooms, they don't have any dog tags. Of course, we can get them from them. But there is one person that does break that rule and we'll be seeing that here in a sort second. Of. It's, like, it's very weird. It's like, you know, <laughs> dog tags are usually from like, you know, actually holding them up and then, you know, shaking them down. But yeah, this one breaks the rules a little bit. But he's also <laughs> not an enemy, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I think. To, to be fair. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
After a little bit more story time, we're going to go here. And uh, fun fact, if you've never played this game before, yes, you will be Jyoti and you could technically press triangle, but this is just a tutorial Shadow where you're totally Wicca. safe, so you can also just do nothing. And we both have our arms, so we're yeah, not yeah, going to no, do anything. And we're just going to write it out this list. <laughs> yeah. You remember so use the time, you? You know, straighten up your position, posture check, flex a little bit on the camera, <laughs> drink some water, and then we're going to continue. Concentration of cerebral <laughs> implants. Have they altered your memory, too? And as you see, it is all the way down, and my life just stays full. Yep. But the next token section, that one, very important that we do <laughs> match that one. The next that one's one, the we do one. have to do something. Yes, <laughs> that one's the big one. There we go. More dialogue. Olga explains now her situation, that she's been um, basically forced to work with the Patriots here and has to do the things because her daughter is in capture here. And we're like, oh, god damn, we got to... We gotta play the game as well. So <laughs> basically, we're a little bit remote controlled, literally as we are as a game character as well. Olga, you can't keep this up. They're bound and this little meme you. part where we're just gonna get I'll free you in a little punched. While. Brace yourself. Ooh, no. did a good chunk. And a uh, fun fact: uh, for like the damage value, that is actually equal to a bullet, according to the difficulty. Huh? Yeah. So I see. I have effectively taken one bullet worth of damage so far <laughs> at the end, which is unfortunate because on my VE. You know, it's just a little, like, tiny, like, little... Hmm. It's not quite a like, rocket punch, yeah, exactly. but it's definitely close. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now, please look away, everyone. It's like <laughs> intimate situation here. We're just going to quickly move over here, and we also lost the ability to use, like, full-on CQC. The only thing that we can really do is try to wait all of these guards here, and for that, we're going to immediately answer this guy called here. There we go. And then we're going to do a quick card for you. There we go. And the guard... Because we immediately answered the call, um, it's not further in the cycle, so he's just far enough away that he notices us, but doesn't right. alert on Turn us. Alright, right let me just... What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Cut, the Cut the power right now. Turn it off. One Turn it off, Alec One. <laughs> We're done here. Worry. It's a game. It's a game, just like usual. You'll ruin your eyes playing so close to the TV. What are you talking right. about? Let me... Let's move back a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Something happened to me last Thursday when I was driving home. What? I had a couple of miles to go. Huh? I looked up and saw a glowing orange object in the sky to the east. Oh, that's orange it right was there. moving very irregularly. <laughs> Suddenly, there was <laughs> intense light all around me. There's <laughs> lights around us. Oh my god, are we in the game? What do you think happened to me? <laughs> Fine. Forget, Forget it. People. Whatever. Okay, I'll, okay, back to the front. <laughs> <laughs> back to the regular script. <laughs> we're going to quickly move around here. We're going to make sure that when we walk around these pillars, there's certain cameras that we want to avoid, like this here. And then we're going to do a little bit of a jump. Whoop. Don't fall down this gap here. It's very yes, devastating. Yes. There's another camera. Watch out for this one. And this guard, we basically just can't be through and then leave the room. All right. All right. We're good. From here on out, we're in the colon, and we basically want to move up a little bit in the more northern part of this. Because we're going to have to wait for a few of these uh, codecs to skip through them. Yeah. And at the end, after five of these, we're going to have the sixth one from Rose that will then automatically forward this game into the final few sequences. And how much more do you hear? Just go through these codec calls and we will see someone appear in the top right corner and quickly as uh, she came, she'll disappear after this next one too, so hey, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone. Kojima. <laughs> okay, sir. Yeah, from the story bits is basically um, after the sniping segment, we've uploaded a virus to the so-called Arsenal gear. And this whole simulation here is also based on what Arsenal gear does. So one interpretation is that at the end of the game, basically this whole thing is just succumbing to this worm and then slowly the simulation falls apart. And that's why like uh, everyone is like talking weird to us and only the physical people like Snake are actually making sense of us now. Talking about Snake. Here's the last door take here, and yeah, technically we're not going to hold him up with the gun, but we're going to quickly give him a hug from behind, as we are good friends by now, we don't <laughs> know him from first name basis. We're going to quickly pick him up, and here we go, the last dog tag. Rather than Hideo Kojima. Yep. A fun fact about this dog tag, it's always different depending on the difficulty. So on very easy, here's Elfboy Pluskin, on easy is Mara Silverberg, normal he's a uh, Solid Snake, hard he's Liquid Snake, and then on Extreme, as you've seen here, he's Hideo Kojima. Right, and after we did our first slash right at the beginning, there's a 44 second timer that we need to wait out. So we're just going to stand here, wait a little bit. The game basically gives us a little bit of time to play around with the sword, so we get to know to it, and that we already know that. But we cannot still skip it here, so we're just going to wait. 
time for the next boss count, uh, where we have now the Tengus here. Tengus are a special kind of guards here. Very aggressive and also very damaging to our health. So let's hope we're going to make it through that here with just some stuns and, of course, no damage at all. And we need to move over here to the stun from up here. Move to the side. No damage. Very nice. As soon as it pops now, most of them are blinded. Ooh. Do the same thing again here. One stun and another one for backup. Ouch. I'm almost forgetting that. All right, let's see how it goes. Oh my god, we're bleeding. I actually got hit, actually, so I'm actually going to crouch just a little bit to make sure that in case any yeah. kind of stray Tengus come along, so... Absolutely. But yeah, what just happened there, basically, is we're leaning against the door, we go in first person. We do a punch, punch, kick, and on the kick we turn around and we let go first person as we basically face the door. That way our hitbox attends, extends just so we go to the next fight. Speaking of the next fight, we're right here at so-called Tengu 2. We're going to do the so-called Kuden skip. First off, we're going to knock out Snake here. So we will be asleep, and when he's asleep, the guards are like, Alright, taking care of the first guard. Now where's the second guy? And they just all come towards us. And what we're gonna do now is basically just spray the normal with the coolant spray. Or as I like to say, the smelly spray, because they're always like, Oh, no, what the hell? They don't really like that. Now, normally, if we were playing uh, on our own with our own timer, we'd also look like, Okay, we're gonna wait roughly a minute and ten seconds. But with fun fact, you can also just not do that and just wait it out. Because after a certain while, the game automatically is like, well, you're not going to fight them and the guards are all like busy. I guess you're just done. Not like the developers were done. If you look at Snake's name here, by the way, a little yeah. fun fact. Uh, the Shadow Hunter Snake's name is only accounted for the S in the end, but not for the ache. So that gives my eyesight a little bit of an ache seeing this and hopefully they fix this in a later version. Which I think they did. <laughs> All right, just be done here. Once you start seeing the extra alert box start to go down, that means that fight is over. Yep. Also, nobody knows why this works this way. It just works. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Talk to some guys. Have a good message. Take us two done. And now, the big event everyone's tuned in for. I hope you're all here for this. We're going to fight the Metal Gear of this game. Well, Metal Gears of this game. Because we're going to fight Metal Gear Ray, and up to 20 of these we have to take out. Well, not the Metal Gear race necessarily, but their amount of health bars. And uh, good luck already in advance. We're going to have to do this in a very precise way, where we want to loop them around so they don't attack us at all, and we're just going to stay there as is. Now, we have a ration as backup here, if I remember correctly, so we can take a little bit of damage, but already having gotten some damage earlier, it's not ideal. It's a bit unfortunate because I actually took some damage. Um, I think I had a uh, stab snake a little too late and actually got a shot off because simply I would yeah. stab them and then block the shots. But unfortunately, I was a bit too close to them, so I actually got one off. And then I got hit at Tengu's, and then I went into bleeding. So, a bit unfortunate, but that's why we have the ration for yeah. situations like this. But I've made yeah. you also, as you notice, I'm in the menu, but it's still progressing through the speeds. This is one of the rare points in the game where you can just have the menu freely open and do whatever you want. I just it's chose to do pose right here. Can you do another one, maybe? I had to smoke yep. Out it's basically just a sound file that's playing in the background. And during this, we get all the time we need in order to prepare our menus and get ready for this next fight. Jack, those days right, and let's start the Ray fight. Try 20 singers. Crash and equipped. Yeah. Split Good luck. Between life yeah. and death. You ran from it, and now you've been led back to war by something less than real. What's certainly real is how we're going to start this fight. So once we load in, we're going to do one count before, because we want to be respectively close here. And we're going to start with these rays in order. So we're going to go the center one, the right one, and the left one. And we're always going to hit them first in the knee and then in the mouth. Here's one of the things where Sons of Liberty US is going to be a bit harder to play as, because um, not only we're we playing on PS2 and have lots of slowdown from shooting a stinger here, we also have the problem that all of these hitboxes on screen stay as long as you don't hit the mouth. So even if you shot them in the knee, you could technically shoot them again in the knee, and then that would be messing up, of course, because there's no iframes open yet. So far we're looking good here. We're going to shoot this one in the mouth, taking care of the first one. We're going to shoot the next one in the knee and in the mouth, which hopefully works. Worked. There we go. Not bad RNG. We got the bad RNG from the third one, but it's fine. We're going to still continue on. The C is going to send up at least one rocket here, so that's fine. And we're going to have two more shots that we need to set up on this number three. Now, number four and five are already coming in here. So we're going to be careful. And as you can see here, number five also has those hitboxes already. Let's go, what the hell? Why is he still close? Still fine. They got it. All good. Now, this is where the loop really begins. We're going to try to get them as close as we can. And oh my god, there's a lag of the way. Okay, I guess oh, that happens. Oh, okay. Guys, just not wanting to get off the stage. Please don't do that. 
Yeah, so we have another one jumping on stage now. We want to ideally, of course, take care of him before he starts attacking us. He's just one shot away. Should be fine. There we go. And then there's already another one coming in that we already put into this loop again. So this one should be done after this mouth shot. There we go. And now we just only have one to worry about it again. Because ideally this one on the right should not jump on stage. And it looks to be good. Alright. This one's prepared now. He just needs one more shot, so he's done for. Ooh. There we go. Alright, and now it's coming back again to the new ones as we take care of them. Once again, just knee shot, head shot, moving on. And we want to cycle them as long as we can. Only one of these rays is allowed to be on stage at all times. So as long as we have one here, we have a little bit of time now, prepare them. Ooh. There we go. It's all. And as you can see, there's like so many hitboxes at once on screen here. It can be very, very tricky, especially from new ones coming in already that we can't even technically shoot it because they're too far away from us. All right, there's another one fresh that uh, we need to take care of. Part of the face, unfortunately. Wanted to do the knee and headshot here. It's fine. And still carry on with this. But I think he will jump on stage soon. See how it goes. Nope, he's dead. Very good. Moving on here in script. Right. We're, we're, st we're still good. We're still good. This one will jump on stage now. And there's two new ones coming in. In the meantime that they're coming in, we're still free to do what we need to do here. And basically, once again, back at the beginning of the loop here. We have to do this for 20 of these health bars. Thankfully, not actually 20 of these rays. So only the amount of health that we deduct from all of these rays altogether must be equal to 20 health bars. This looks very good right now. One shot. So they're low enough that just one shot in the mouth, even if it's close, would still kill them. Wow, nice. That worked. Didn't even mean to do that, but okay, style points, I guess. <laughs> so far, so good. We're going up to at least the E letters, if I understand correctly. But then we're also getting very close to the end, so... Still plenty more of these ways to get, and oop. Timing matters here, but so far we're doing very well. None of them has actually started to attack us. We've not used any of the ration that we had in here. So for all intents and purposes, this is still going really well. New one's coming in here, starting to damage them. The old one is still on the stage and slowly going off the stage. And so we just keep this whole thing going. The whole entire loop is basically just based on like, keep them busy so long they don't attack you. There you go. Just one more shot, but it's still fine. We gotta keep this one busy here. There's a little bit of break in between. Oh, oh that's fine. Let them go aggressive. Shoot them out, and you stand for the next ah. one. Next one is also ready. Oh, let's see if this works. There okay, we go. Got him. All right, got him, got him. Ah, uh, but this guy's now blocking this shot. Yeah, that's a okay. little bit non-optimal. He's getting away from us now. This is what we really want to prevent with this loop. Because as we can see here, if they're too far away, even if they shoot them in the weak spot, they're just running away from us. And if they get far away from us, they're also going to use not the idea. Where's the lock on? Oh my god! There it is. Okay. You're good to go. Take care of this one so they don't start walking around, and then we're gonna focus on this one on stage right now. So, this is where they look slowly is falling apart, sadly. It is what it is. And even if we had this locked on, it still didn't count. Oh, okay, well, and that's why we have the rationing because I got a bit mixed up there, so. Yep. Fair enough. And then all the way at the back, there's also one starting to set up these rockets. This is why we wanna keep them basically close to us, because if they're close enough, they use different kind of attacks. And oh my god, what the hell? Come on stage, boy, come on stage. Eat the rocket. There you go. I uh, didn't full count. This should be good. Okay, yeah. he's done. He's going off stage now. We got a little bit of a break room. Then we can move back again closer to where the actual ways are coming on stage. And try to keep them in check as much as we can. Now this one will probably soon jump on stage. Yep, as we can see here. But he's just one shot away. And let's now focus here for the final. There's just a few more that we need to kick out. Of. So there you go, there's a brand new one. Try to keep him here as long as we can. Keep them as busy here. Nice hook shot. Wow. <clears throat> Love to see that. Alright, this one's coming on stage. Now we gotta wait for him to turn around a little bit. We got this opening here on his mouth. And now we're just gonna keep them busy as much as we can. Alright, they're now slowly moving around us here. Should be still good. Let's try to get this hook shot. Didn't land. Should still be fine. Great, which one's coming up next? I think it's gonna be the guy that's turned around right now. 
I found like oh my god, that was so close. We're good now to the east, so we're getting also closer to the end of this fight. Oh, oh, okay, oh, that guy that behind so me. I just wanted to make sure this. Okay, <laughs> just now because I'm moving around. Okay, we're uh, almost uh, done. We're almost done. We got this. We got this. Okay. There we go. GG's. <laughs> Everyone, that was super hard. The first half of that fight was actually like above average. Like yeah. it was going pretty well, and then things started to this fall a bit out of control. And, there. Uh, yeah, and it takes some. Are you awake yet, Jack? Nicely done. Nicely done. So for this one, it's very important to actually mash. You actually need to mash nine times per second for 30 seconds on extreme. On European extreme, it's 55 to 60 or so. But thankfully, it's not the worst in the world. But and this is the main reason why whenever they um, released the game for the HD collection, they made it only 15 seconds and they gave you a very easy health bar. So you have a much, much bigger, um, I guess, room of error. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to press nine times a second here. Don't want to go too fast. want to just be have a steady pace. I believe my max is about 12 to 13, and I can get myself tired very easily, so you know, you want to kind of get that feel for like 9, and just you know, have it be about here, be about 30 seconds, well, about, so now we're 15, thanks to this, and... Yeah, you don't want to tire out yourself, you want to just keep going steady and keep it for the entire duration, instead of just mashing as fast as possible, yeah. because there's no benefit to it, to doing it as fast as possible. Keeping it long and steady, that's really what matters here. And nice. that's one of the reasons why that there was a, like, um, big proponent to actually, um, have like turbo yeah. and like more like modern runs nowadays especially for like pc like you know we all allow turbo for skipping codex cutscenes and more importantly this choking segment because on your pantry and pc it's about 55 seconds and for most people unless like you know you train yourself to kind of like you know feel that nine times per second it's it's a bit uh scary because you know things like rsi and like you know stuff can be you like bad later on yeah so yeah and like unfortunately like you know kojima was a big fan for like you know Metal solid one two and i I um, believe Peace Walker too, where like yeah, there's, there's like big like mashing sections for whatever reason. He was just super into that, I guess. <laughs> At least from just one, you actually got some small breaks. This one just you no, know, just do full yeah. 55 seconds right now, and it's just like oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Speaking of getting into it, I'm gonna leave Tyler now on his own. He's gonna focus because for the next boss fight, we're gonna deal with Solidus, the final boss. Then we're also gonna meet the end. Well, not the end for Medic Soul 2, but the end of this one yeah. this time. <laughs> So we have a little bit more of Dialog and Codex first, and then we're going to move on, as I said, to Solidus. Solidus is there in two phases. We're going to start off by just having him block us first, and then we want him to retaliate. And from that movement on, we can start giving him a few punches. So we're not actually going to use this sword to damage him for much of this part, as you can see here. Retaliation, and now... Oh, oops. Let's try that again. All right, all right. And here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to punch him three times. One, two, and three. A little bit delayed. And then we're going to go to his left side. So sort of just has lost an eye. So we're going to attack him on his eye patch side to the right. And then we're going to move back to his good side where we need to have him block us, actually. This blocking actually resets him. Because if we were to continuously attack him from the side, he would always fall over. This falling over, of course, costs time. And you would also need to deal with different attacks. But with this loop of constantly three punches from the right, two slashes from the left that he will block, we can keep him in this constant momentum. Being here is a little bit awkward, but I think it should be fine here for the intense purposes of the camera here. And once we get him below 40% of stamina, he's going to move into his second phase. So far he's looking very good. He's keeping it steady. And now he's arrived out at the top right corner if you make it all the way. So from here, should be fine. Let's see if it works. Nice. Awesome. This is exactly what we want to have happen. With a precise counter, we have enough time to just carve away from him, and then he will do a very so uh, short dash, so he doesn't need to go all the way. Now, if you're lucky, he also doesn't do many dashes after this. He's going to do close to us, and from then on, we do the exactly same thing again and keep him in the loop. Uh, that's the average four. That's equals elbow, just what you want. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what we want. He could also start slashing us, but if he just is just the elbow, totally fine for us. We're just going to block it with a sword and then reset the loop and just come back again to this. Once again, three um, hits from the right on his bad eye side. Oh, wait, he doesn't have an eye anymore. <laughs> and then two on his good side where he will block us, so we reset him back again so he doesn't fall over. Looking good so far. And we're about to hit time soon. Just a few more times. Keeping it steady, keeping it calm. Alright, about to be done here. 
And the final four punches. And time. Time. <laughs> Jesus. All right, hey, 143.19. That's actually pretty good considering, you know, the kind of fiasco at yeah. the beginning of the game, so. Nice. Yeah, um, with an estimate, yep. what else can you ask for? Yeah. Especially with that raid loop. My God, you make this look <laughs> so exciting. All right, so, um, yeah, that was Melga Solid 2, all Dog Tags Extreme. Thank you so much for um, letting me showcase this here. Uh, shout out to guess, people that got me in spirit way back when. Uh, Jaguar King, Head Trump 1290, Gunner Maniac, and all of the MGSR crew, friends and family, to actually let me... Travel all the way from my small town in Texas all the way here to Europe where I can um, run this game for a very great cause. So I uh, do appreciate it. And thank you again to, uh, to uh, Taos Test. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Mine's been like a thousand miles an hour. Taos Test for um, letting me <laughs> or, uh, focus, try to help me focus and play the game. As you can see, my mind is jumbled right now. But thank you all so much for uh, letting me play this game and hope you all enjoy the rest of the event. Yep. <laughs> GG's everyone. Thank I'll you so much for that amazing run. I okay. want to leave you off with one final donation. Okay, sure. From Solid Snake, five euro saying, freeze! <laughs> and with that, we will be heading into a quick intermission screen and we will be right back. Our culture.